Hello everyone. In the previous two modules, we have discussed about the block diagram of JPEG compression and discrete cosine transform. And we have discussed about how to apply that discrete cosine transform on H plus H block and how to apply that for the whole image. The same steps we can carry forward for the entire blocks uh, in order to compress that image. So in this module, we are going we will discuss about this quantization and zigzag arrangement. In the next subsequent uh, modules, we'll discuss about run length encoding and DPCM and entropy coding, how we are going to compress the data by using the Hoffman encoding. So let's get started. Now, so now first of all, in the previous uh, module, we had discussed about the, how we are going to apply for the discrete cosine transform on eight plus eight block. So here, I'm just recapping that one. So suppose let, let's say this is an eight plus eight image block. H plus H image block. After applying DCT, we will get once again H plus H block. So, where the first element is, we will call it as in here DC component, and the remaining all the values we will call it as in here AC components. Now, here this particular DCT discrete cosine transform will perform or it will convert the spatial domain like pixel intensities into the frequency domain where it will locate higher amount of whatever the highest priority is there those values that will be located at the lower frequency locations and the higher frequency locations are having the least priority information so in order to eliminate all those things we are going for the quantization step here so in the JPEG compression, in the standard JPEG compression, they specified some quant some standard quantization methods, quantization tables or matrix we can say. So here why we are going for the quantization. So here we are going to reduce the number of bits per sample. So in order to store any pixel here, so you suppose pixel value uh, uh, to store one, one pixel, it will require eight bits. After DCT, it may increase the number of pixel, number of bits also in order to store the DCT coefficient. So in order to reduce the uh, bit length for each sample, we are going to divide this particular DCT coefficient with some quantized, quantized, quantization matrix elements. So here what we are doing like this is a DCT matrix, 8 plus 8 matrix. So in the standard JPEG compression, they already defined some quantization matrices for the luminance and chrominance blocks. So there are two different kinds of quantization matrix, standard quantization matrices. So we'll use here, in the luminance we will use one kind of quantization matrix, in the chrominance uh, compression we will use the other kind of quantization matrix. This is for the DCT, we can represent here it is in Q, otherwise a uh, capital Q. Quantization matrix will represent Q of i comma j. And here we can represent this is in Q of i comma j. So each and every value, each and every element present in this uh, particular uh, quantization matrix is divided with this particular Q matrix, Q of i comma j. If suppose uh, this is an after performing the DCT, we will get uh, something like this 1425. This is for example 1425 and the remaining all values we will get it here. And then the standard uh, quantization matrix is having the first element is in 16 and so on, we'll have the different values here. So here, what we are doing in the quantization step, in a sense, we are dividing this 1425, 1425 divided by 16, whatever the value we'll get, that particular quantized value requires very less number of uh, bits in order to store that one when compared to this, uh, to store this 1425. 1425 requires more number of bits when compared to this quantization, where this, uh, where we'll get that quantization here. So the formula is f of f dash of u comma v equal to round of f of u comma v divided by q of u comma v, where f of u comma v is the discrete cosine transform coefficients. After performing the DCT, we'll get that particular coefficients. Is then q of u comma v is an is a q of u comma v is an uh, quantization matrix. They they define the standard quantization matrix for the luminance and the um, chrominance blocks compression okay so in this JPEG compression they are using the uh, that is um, if you suppose if you perform the uniform quantization in the sense every value is divided by the same uh, quantized uh, same value that is called uniform quantization non-uniform quantization in the sense they will prepare some kind of uh, elements inside the matrix that is called the non-uniform that means we are dividing uh, every quantization every DCT coefficient with the different uh, values that is called here non-uniform quantization so we already know that our human eye is very 
uh, more sensitive to the lower frequencies than compared to the higher higher frequencies. So due to that reason, we are going to use the very less values in the lower bound, lower half side. Here we'll use the less lesser values here lesser uh, lesser values in the sense in the magnitude it is it is very less. So when compared to the, uh, here higher bounds, we'll use the higher values. So in order to truncate all the values to the zeros, these are the uh, less priority values. So we can divide these values with the higher amount of number. So here the lower frequency values is the higher priority value. So we can divide those numbers with the smaller values. So that is where we can call it as a non-uniform quantization. So the next one is in zigzag and zigzag sign. After performing the quantization, we'll get suppose this is an 1 8 plus 8 block. So where we'll get here some suppose I will consider some elements here 23, 5, 4, 0, and so on, 5, 6, all zeros, and remaining all zeros up to the last one. So here we can rearrange in order to get the all the last values are equal into zero. So we are going to rearrange the values in the form of zigzag fashion. So it will start from the DC value. We can we can anyway this particular DC component is then further other kind of encoding mechanism that is the DPCM. We'll discuss this about in the next module. So after that we are forming we are forming a 1 plus 64 vector that is we are mapping that 8 plus 8 matrix into 1 plus 64 vector from here it will, from the DC element it will start from here it will go and next down and then like this it will follow this particular pattern in order to convert that 8 plus 8 matrix into 1 plus 64 in order to group lower frequency coefficients in the top of the vector we are going to do uh, we are performing the zigzag scan here okay then simply arranging like 8 plus 8 matrix into 1 plus 64 where we will get the uh, lower frequency coefficient in the top of the vector and the least uh, least uh, le least frequency least important uh, values will get that higher frequency coefficient at the bottom okay so in the next video we'll discuss about how we are going to apply the dpcm on the dc component actually i have actually I already informed uh, where we'll get that dct and where uh, which components are sc components which components are dc components where here we can say like this is the first element we'll call it as in here dc component and the remaining all the values we can say it as an AC component here. So we'll see in the next module, we'll see how to apply the DPCM on this particular DC component and then run and encoding on this particular AC components. And then we'll see how to apply the Hoffman encoding on the to get the compressor sequence kit. Okay. Thank you.